What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of CNC. This is episode number 33 and we start today's with stuff with the final game of January Nottingham Forest away at the city ground as they chase promotion to the Premier League. Coming into this game on the back of a four game losing streak, I thought right man, things have got to change. I've got to be more aggressive, I've got to start going for it. And I know in the last episode I was, I wouldn't say making excuses for myself, but I was pointing out that of course as we know this season FIFA has got a lot more difficult ultimate is a lot more challenging so you know when you are one of the weaker teams in the division it's not a surprise to go into a bad run of form at times but then I thought you know what Nah, screw that attitude, man. Let's get back to winning ways here. So, we should leave very early on. Uh, our top scorer, Rabi Rotondo, connected with a great Gavin Humphreys through ball. And he was just at the heart of everything in this first half, man. Finding Tony Matthews down the left-hand side. Our academy graduates linked up. It's played back to our number 10. And what a goal this is for Gavin. I'm so gutted he doesn't have the number and the name on the back of his shirt. Like so many youth players in this year's FIFA, it is a common bug, as we know. As far as I'm aware, it still hasn't been fixed even for new saves it's so frustrating I guess it does kind of add to the uniqueness of this year's FIFA it is a bit weird but hey you don't need to know the name on the back of the shirt or the number you know this guy's name already Gavin Humphreys with an absolute beauty there makes it 2-0 and then on the stroke of the hour mark you're a chance to make it free Rishesha down the right hand side I mentioned before I love this kid rolls it across the middle and there's Ruben Cole the former bluebird to make it free so half an hour to go out of city ground 3-0 up on Nottingham Forest absolutely dominating and I was thinking, yeah, okay, here we go. Back to winning ways and back to winning ways in style as well. Three minutes later, still leading by three. Forrest and three back into the game. Ryan Yates finds Obvious Jerry. Played through to Spadursky. Lovely little reverse step over and hold up to find Brennan Johnson, who, as we know, this guy's a big transfer target in mind. One of the higher potential Welsh players in the game. I mentioned before, I really wanted him at the start of the season. In the end, we got Rabi Matondo. It proved to be a blessing in disguise. The night of Forrest wouldn't lose him because Matondo's been amazing this year, but he is still someone I want to bring in in time. So, Forrest for a glimmer of hope. It's 3 1. The deficit cut to 2, and it was 15 minutes to go a brilliant little chip ball back across the face of the goal headed in by the number nine as Price's desperation dive counts for nothing and out of nowhere in 15 minutes we've gone from 3-0 up to only lead them by one so at this point I was thinking if I throw this away I'm not going to forgive myself five minutes to go Scott McKenna Scott the block as we know him on the ball in the centre circle rolling it through to a Jada as Forrest come forward for one last chance Jao Carvalho finds Brennan Johnson the first goal scorer down the right hand side holds off Tony Matthews and after I made the inception I was like Play out from the back, but play sensible. <laughs> you know, just find a blue shirt, and if you need to, hoofing in the touch. Why or oh, why did I try and play a risky ball out instead? There was one blue shirt open, so I tried to get the ball further up the pitch. Really poor decision. Forrest win it back. Quick little cut back, and there it is. Nine of Forest free. Newport County free. And an absolute bottle job from yours truly. I stormed right down the tunnel at full time. I was like, man, oh man, oh man. I don't even want to talk to the media post-game, but I did. Absolutely choked it. Absolutely bottled. There's no doubt about that. Freeing it up to draw 3-3. It's now no wins in our last five. The only good news is that Humphreys had a stormer again. Another assist, another goal. Seven assists and six goals now in 24 games. As you know, up to 74 overall. And still only 16 years old. Yeah, he's the 16-year-old leader in this team because he's been our second best player this year behind Rabi Matondo. He's been absolutely excellent. Right now, he's got a shadow strike development plan and it's working. You know, it's very quick growth for Humphreys. And he's really been the, the saving grace of this season, you know. And I say the saving grace, at the end of the day, with 14 points off the bag, he's in sixth. Look, there's 15 games to go. There is an outside shot on making the playoffs. But let's be honest here, I'm far more worried about Huddersfield Town in 22nd place. As long as I avoid the bottom three, I'm going to take mid-table, man. We're in 14th place. This is our first season of the championship. I wasn't expecting to get three straight promotions. I've never done that before. And in this year's FIFA, with the ultimate difficulty being so much harder, I think that was a little bit unrealistic. I think at the start of the season, when I was saying, oh, you know, outside shot of the playoffs is definitely possible. Yeah, it's definitely possible, but it's definitely possible I could get married by 30. 
it's not going to happen, but it's possible. And I think that's how I started a season one, do you know what I mean? I was getting a little bit too ambitious, a little bit cocky, a little bit too big for my boots after bats about promotions. I wasn't really thinking about the, the realistic outcome of this season. And that was mid-table at best. At the moment, that looks like where it'll be. We stopped the rot after four straight losses, but after leading by three and only get, getting a point, it feels like a defeat, no doubt about that. But again, it, it does pay homage to this year's FIFA, which again, I have to say, I, I am just enjoying a lot more because of the challenge. And you know, I mentioned in the last episode, I mentioned it throughout the entire episode, one with difficulty being so much harder this year. When you do get wins, you often have to grind them out and you're just never safe. I was leading by three and I still only got a point. It was half an hour to go and I conceded three goals and let that win slip through my fingers. But again, it's it's a good thing, man. I talked about it in the last episode. Being challenged like I am this year, I think it's a really good thing. I think, to be fair, I think also as well, you know, those of, those of you who are playing Ultimate as well, you'll be finding it out too, just like me. Until you become a five-star team and one of the best teams in the country and one of the best teams in the world, you are you are going to struggle and progression is going to be slower. But I think it is a good thing. I really, really do to pro pro prolong the longevity of the save, most importantly, and also give you a real challenge as opposed to dominating and winning the Champions League in two years with Norwich. I think that's just that's just not how career mode should should be, um, unless you want it to be that way. But for me, I'm preferring the the slower growth, the slower progression, and the more challenging moments that I've certainly had in this save, no doubt about it. I mean, it's challenging enough to make a signing because on deadline day, you saw we had a lot of, ca a lot of cash to play with. Unfortunately, I just couldn't bring anyone in. Ethan and Padu rejected a loan deal to me. I couldn't get Joe Rodden because Spurs wouldn't let him go. Same with Nico Williams. Um, Matt Smith Hull wanted too much. So in the end, my fourth target was Dylan Levitt. And we had him last season on loan. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who as we know has just been sacked. Oh my goodness gracious me. I think many people would say long overdue, no doubt about it. Fair play to the guy. He took it like a champ though. Did you see his interview with MUTV when he was talking about how he's had you know great times here, great memories you know he did he did give it his all but I think I think many people would probably say it was just a bit out of his depth as manager there um but even so um to be fair I took it like a champ you know didn't didn't throw anyone under the bus nothing like that that's that's the way you handle rejection that's the way you handle failure I I, I, I thought that was great from Oli Solskjaer to be fair I mean for all the criticism he's got for all the uh, negativity he's received uh from pundits um you know even De Gea coming out after defeat on uh, on, su on Saturday against Watford and saying, you know, we don't know what we're doing effectively. Actually, that's one of your team leaders saying that, you know. Um, I, I thought he just handled the whole situation really well. So fair play to him. I think United will be in a better place without Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. There's no doubt about that. I think they'll be able to kick on once they get a more established manager uh, who tactically is a lot better. But um, even so, you, you have to say fair play despite getting the sack. He really did take it like a champ. I did see actually this morning <laughs> that Steve Bruce was uh, considering throwing his hat into the ring as manager of Manchester United. Hey, you never know, he played there for a while. He did pretty well as a player, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see whether that move materialises or not. But anyway, Dylan Levitt came in, uh, so we signed him back again on loan. Last season, you know, to be fair, he was all right in limited minutes on loan, but I really like our CM duo of Ben Davis and Gavin Humphreys. You know, I, I really do. You know, Davis is taking the captain's armband on an interim basis with Cooper going down with the injury. And obviously Gavin Humphreys is the 16-year-old leader in this team. I I think Levitt is like a really good young talent. There's no doubt about that. But he's he's still going to be a bench player. Even coming in on a high wage, paying 50% of the wage split on Manchester United, he's still going to be a bench player in this team and plays the occasional midweek game. And uh, just the occasional game, I want to rotate things around a little bit. I like Davis and Humphreys. You know, as a duo, the, the past and the future, they work really well in the present. Anyway, uh, second and final game of today's episode on the back of scouting update and the caddy update. Look at the, uh, look at the uh, fixtures coming uh, in February as well. We have no midweek fixtures coming in February this uh, this month, so I think that's probably a good thing as well. It gives us more rest time, and hopefully we can get back to winning ways in this month. There's some really big games, though, including the first one, Blackburn Rovers, obviously chasing promotions to the Premier League this season. We had the first chance of the game, Robbie Matondo firing wide. It was still 0-0, then 17 and a half minutes in Dolan, who is just such a fabulous young striker in the game. Really awesome young talent. Makes it 1-0 and the visits take lead. I was thinking, here we go again. This is going to be five defeats in our last six. Something's got to change. Half an hour in, this was cool though. Gavin Humphreys chasing back. Absolutely chasing back on defense to win it back. Start to move off. Then find a pocket of space. Go all the way. But unfortunately, hit it straight at Kaminsky. I love the effort and the work rate on defense. I just couldn't finish the chance. But still training by one. The visits a chance to make it 2-0 right for the break as well. Butterworth splits two defenders for finding Chapman there. 
there. My defense in this phase of play was absolutely awful as well. I was chasing the ball. I was chasing shadows. I literally just could not put a tackle in. Buckley denied by a great save by Price. And right before half time, the visitors should have been tuned up. Had not been for a great save by our teenage goalkeeper, they would have been. So in the second half, that kept us in the game. It kept us within a shout. And we had had a couple of chances. We just didn't take them. So 63 minutes in, I knew I needed to be more clinical. Rally Matondo down the right-hand side. Holds it up. Doesn't choose to cross. Works it inside to Lloyd Lloyd instead. He offloads to Humphreys. And I called him earlier a couple of times this season. The 16-year-old leader. That's what he is. This guy is 16 years old. I should say this kid is 16 years old. He is a team leader in this side. Team love him. Players love him. Fans love him. I love him. Gavin Humphreys with his seventh of the year. Smacks it past Kaminsky and puts us back on level terms. He's been our best player in this really poor run of form. He's been our second best player overall to Ravi Matondo. I'm telling you, man. This guy, as we know, is the future of Wales. There's no doubt about that. He was at all of everything in these two games today. With 10 minutes to go. Oh, what a chance to end the winless run, and I should have taken it. It fell to the right man, Rabi Matondo, but the adrenaline just got the better of me. Once I cut it back to Rabi in the middle, I just blazed it, leaned way too far back and blazed it way over the bar for a three-point conversion. Absolutely awful from yours truly there. Should have won the game late on instead, had to settle for the point. It's good to know after a poor run of four defeats on the trot, back-to-back -back games without a loss, but really, both of these games against Nottingham Forest and Blackburn, two teams in the playoffs, probably went into them thinking we'd lose in Instead, should have won them both. That's why with 14 games to go, I just don't think playoffs are realistic. We just got to make sure we get back to winning ways and avoid the bottom three. But that will introduce some CNC guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of CNC very soon.